wetsuits, do you know if you need them? Can you use them? What type, what type do you need? What are the best ways to go about finding a wetsuit that will work for you? This is what we're going to cover in this little chat today. So I just want to kind of go over this uh, information as far as gear goes, as far as wetsuits go, and give you some good ideas where to start, where to look. As always, if you have questions, you can tell me, and I will gladly help you out with my recommendations and whatever you got. But you do need to consider this, especially pretty much any race I've done in my since 2004, so almost 16 years of triathlon racing. Like every race I've done, the water has not been so hot that I couldn't use a wetsuit if I wanted to. It's optional, uh, but the if you want a wetsuit, you can use it, but you have to understand the USAT guidelines for wetsuits. They're permitted for water temperatures up to 76.1. So if it's below 76.1, if they measure it anywhere in the body of water you're going to be swimming in, it's below 76.1, you could go in there and wear a wetsuit. Full sleeve, no sleeves, so no sleeves with the, the sleeves on your arms if you want to do that. Whatever you want to use, you can use that and swim in the wetsuit in the imprint. And prohibited for water temperatures greater than 83.8. So if it gets hotter than 83.8 degrees Fahrenheit, 28.8 degrees Celsius, you are not permitted to wear a wetsuit, period. So that basically means no neoprene suits of any kind whatsoever, like body glove or whatever you got out there. You can't wear it because they consider that a dangerous temperature. When you're out swimming in the water, they don't want people overheating and having problems. In between, athletes wearing wetsuits when the water temperatures between those cutoff temperatures are not eligible for age group awards. So typically, and I'll use Ironman races for an example, if you're doing Ironman Chattanooga or you're doing 70.3 Waco or something like that, <clears throat> and the temperature is, say, 77 degrees in the water, you can still wear a wetsuit. They'll put you at the end of the start for the swim. And you are not eligible, let's say you end up actually getting like the third best time in your age group. But if you're in between those temperatures in the water, you chose to wear a wetsuit. They will mark you as such and you will not be eligible for the award. You won't be eligible for your SAT rankings or anything like that. AWA, anything else in regards to that. So you do not get any points in a point system. But if you're not really worried about age group placing and you really like to wear a wetsuit when you're swimming, as long as you're between those two temperatures, they'll let you swim in it. Just know that you won't be eligible for awards or points. If you're going for USAT points in their system, you also do not get points if you wear a wetsuit in between those two temperatures in your race. So just be aware of when you can and cannot use a wetsuit. And that's first and foremost. If you have one, don't have one, consider getting one. Know why and when you would possibly need one. Just want to go over kind of a few different types. I mean, there's two main types of wetsuits. There's full sleeve and there's sleeveless. So Full sleeve, and I use Xterra personally, and so does uh, anybody in my groups. If you're watching this video, you're eligible for discount code. If you don't know where it's at, let me know, and I can point it in the right direction. But basically, you can get about 50, 60% off of the prices. They have sales all year. You can get a pretty nice wetsuit, and this one's lasted me probably five seasons. Uh, it's been through three or four Ironman races. So, and several hats and other races I like can't even count anymore. But basically, it meets the guidelines for wetsuits. It costs under $100, and it lasts a long time. As long as you know how to take it off, put it on properly without tearing it, ripping it up, it's good to go. And I've done videos on the tutorials how to do that. But the key is to make sure that you're reading their fitting guides and you're looking at the sizing charts and everything. Make sure the suit fits you. Because if you get the wrong size, you're going to be bunched up in the shoulders, you're going to be too tight, and it's too much of a struggle to move your shoulders. That's where most people run into problems. So I just don't like the restriction of a full sleeve and, and when I'm wearing a full sleeve. The problem might actually be that you got the wrong size. I'd highly recommend that if you can find um, the local try shop or anything that maybe have some wetsuits in stock, you can go try on. It might be kind of a look at that brand that they have. But extra is nice, you can get it as soon as you get it. It doesn't get you return it as long as you don't damage it. I think it's in 30 days. So get it, try it on, make sure it fits. And then the, the key is to make sure that you've worked it up from the legs and everywhere. You've got plenty of room in the shoulders to move, but 
but you don't want it bunched up because I had that problem with the first full sleeve I got. So this is back. I used this for Ironman Lake Tahoe 2013. And this thing is pretty huge, uh, but at the time I only had a sleeveless and it's going to be part of the 60s. I definitely want a full sleeve because it would be cold. So I got this and it kind of fit, but it was really, it's actually a little bit too big for me. It's really bunchy in the shoulders. Now it's just kind of my, my suit. I throw in the back of my car if I do an overall or so I'm around town or something like that. I always have it with me in the water or something. But it was a little bit too bunched up in the shoulders. I actually had too much room. So it was really bunchy and it kind of actually probably caused more problems in the water than it solved. It kept me warm, but it was also really loose and probably caused a lot of uh, drag in the water as I sort of moved. So just make sure you get them fit right. Make sure you go with the charts, like I said. It's very important to get them, try them on, and then they can sit it back as long as you have any damage to it. And I, so check their guidelines, make sure you don't push. But there's also a sleeveless option. I used to be a hardcore sleeveless just because, I, like I said before, I didn't understand the true functionality and fit of what suit to make it fit right so then the shoulders aren't a problem. But this, I've used this, and I still use it once in a while. It's a great suit. You know, got it for, I think it was on sale for like 70 bucks way back in the day. I probably had this since 2005, 2006, so it's over 10 years old. Um, still works by no real rips or anything by cost of it. But, so this is the other option a lot of people like to use. This, you're just, your arms are out, you've got no problems, you're just swimming along, no restrictions on your arms. Um, it doesn't solve as many problems. It keeps you warm and it keeps you buoyancy through the bottom of the your body. So that's what you're kind of looking for, maybe a little bit of repression sort of category. That helps you out there. Um, if you do go with sleeveless, there are also options. You can go out and buy the individual sleeves. It'll come up here. So you have your sleeves cut up here and your sleeves here. So that kind of solves the problem of maybe a little bit of shoulder mobility once some people are touching out of the suit. Um, do pay attention out there because I mentioned, you know, Xterra, I like them. Their suits are good. I am not going to be winning. Ironman races, so I do not need cutting edge, eating edge wetsuits that are just everything, that and the bag of chips. Um, you know, I've gotten most of mine for a hundred dollars or less. Really, the price points are very you could pay six, seven hundred dollars for wetsuits. I know I've also got a sponsorship or a partnership with uh Utaru Cycles. They come back with their wetsuit brands, so if you're interested in that, that comes with you just kind of like suits, but they're at the higher end of the, the price spectrum. I think they want six, seven hundred dollars, depending on a lot you get. The lowest one's like three, four hundred dollars. So price doesn't always probably gonna be a little bit better quality, and maybe it's uh, less opportunity for rip and tears and stuff like that. But just know going into it, you know, if you need a wetsuit, there are plenty of wetsuits available that are affordable. And if you're really questioning it, eBay is a great spot. Facebook ads, uh, especially if you have somebody local in town, you can actually kind of go check it out, maybe try it on, and like that. Just see if it fits before you actually buy it. It's a great place. Just mind your, your Facebook uh, classified ads and stuff. You can find a little suit. So don't, don't think you have to have that $1,000 shoe. Don't be scared off that I need a wetsuit, but I don't have $300. If you don't need $300, sign up for like exteriorwetsuits.com. Go to their, their site, sign up for their email newsletter. Sales, do sales for about Friday, Christmas, New Year's, Day, June, Fourth of July. They'll do sales all day long. So it's a great opportunity to get um, quality suits for not too much. But also be careful. No wetsuits can have a thickness of more than five millimeters on your part. So any part of this wetsuit technically cannot be thicker five millimeters. So this knee frame, the setup. Nowhere on the suit, arms, legs, body, torso, thicker than five millimeters. Usually all your good triathlon wetsuit company brands are on board with that, and they understand that. Now, if you go with something like a body glove, like a surfing type of setup, uh, you could be in trouble. They might make it a little bit thicker because people are surfing up in colder waters than typically what you see in Ironman races. Then... And, and I'll put a plug in for Xterra. I did Xterra in Indian Wells with water was 53 degrees. And everything was good except for my face because it was exposed. I was cold. I uh, couldn't feel my feet. I don't like booties. Uh, but the suit did great. So these suits will keep you pretty toasty, 53 degrees, and what a problem. But if you're going into colder waters and you go to 
brand that's not exactly a triathlon wetsuit, it probably will be thicker than five millimeters. Now, I've never been checked. I've never seen anybody checked. I've never seen anybody pulled. But I think if, if it's obvious it's not an extra triathlon wetsuit, that they might take a harder look at you. It's perfectly within their rights. So if they, anytime they think that you're thicker than five millimeters, they can pull you aside, either measure it, disqualify you, or make you take it off. Kind of problem. So make sure that we're picking up a wetsuit that's thinner than five millimeters. Five millimeters is better. So I just want to keep you out of trouble with that. So basically, this is kind of my deep dive into wetsuits. Like I said, I've done several videos, how to get them on, how to get off. Uh, like I said, if you've got any questions and recommendations, I'm not a big external wetsuit fan. Uh, our partnership with them at this point, so if questions we can have access to that. So just let me know or go on the leadership side of the website and look for this kind of code. But these, the main points you can consider is when you're going to wear a wetsuit, what thickness it needs to be. They're not, just because it's more expensive doesn't mean it's all that much better. Maybe it saves you like a minute in a 24 mile swim. Is a minute really worth a thousand dollars instead of a hundred? There are options full sleeve and sleeveless, but full sleeves, they work just fine as long as you get the right size and you get on correct you know, enough room in your shoulders that you should not have to feel the shoulders pull it down. And brands are different. So, Orca, Quintanaru, Xterra, all the Roca, all the other swims, uh, swim wetsuit companies manufactured out there make them a little bit different. So, there may be a brand that fits better. So, like I said, if you've got some place where you want to try different options or something, that'd be great. In your local tri club, a lot of people have different brands of suits. Go for an open water swim, say, hey, everybody bring your suits and everybody can try and try them on and fill them out. See if that's what brand works for you. I don't know if that's a good option or not. But just because the shoulder mobility shouldn't be a detractor using the full sleeve. But if you're using sleeveless and you're pushing, you know, if you want to use a wetsuit, you're pushing 82 degrees out there, a full sleeve might be a little warm. Uh, I've used the full sleeve in July in a race here in Kansas City, and the water was uh, probably like 76, so 76.1 somehow. It rained enough, whatever, and the water was cold enough, I was able to get it less on for a long distance course for a thousand meters. Over a thousand meters towards the end, actually, that's the first time and only time I ever really got warm on the swim and uh, triathlon. So there is a consideration if you go uh, sleepless because the water is going to be right there to cut off. Or if you're going to swim anyway and you're going to go up to that 82 degrees, once you get to 82, it's going to be pretty warm. But sleepless will kind of help you with that. Like I said, don't let the shoulder restriction to track you. I highly recommend them. I, it, what suit is legal if it's under 76.1 or under? I use a full sleeve all the time. So that's just me. My sleeveless is just in the back of my car. If I put a water spot somewhere or something, I can that suit. I got it there. You never know when you're just going to be alongside the road and all of a sudden there's a body of water. You don't need to really open water. But I, it's in the back of my car. Always be prepared. Right? Always be prepared. That's kind of the spiel for the wetsuits. It's, it's not rocket science. It's, uh, you know, like I said, do your research, look up your brands, and just because one is higher price than another, it's all better. And, and as always, if you've got any questions, you want recommendations from me, like I said, sign up for our extra website.com. If you're reading on newsletter, they've always got discounts coming out, and that's a great way to get on top of the people. But so now it's time to get it. If you're in the off season, get it, try it out. You can take it to a, a, a gym or, or a newer pool area with great water. Just make sure you rinse it off thoroughly at the end. I would not wear it every week. I would just wear it once in a while, try it out, get used to it, take it in there. And wherever you wear it, wash it off, especially if you let it set over the winter and you don't use it at all, it will dry out. So expect it to be a little bit, maybe a little bit tighter at first when you put it on the end of the season, but get a few swims in it before you go to race day because you don't want to uh, hit race day and that thing's like extra tight and kind of freaking out. So make sure you get at least, even if you just take the shower and hose it down and let it dry off, it makes it expand a little bit and lets it breathe or something like that, whenever you've got an opportunity to get it wet. So don't let it sit for months. As soon as you get it, try it on from next year. If it doesn't fit, send it back to the other size. And, and like I said, just get used to it over the off season, maybe every other week, just take the pool and do a, a quick workout in it. Just keep getting used to it and figure out to get that the, the right fit, right everything bunched up in the right spot so you have enough room in your shoulders and stuff like that. That's it for wetsuits. Like I said, if you've got any questions, 
all those contact me and I'll be back.